Hey, what's going on guys? Real Touch GML here back with another Java game development series. And in this series, we're going to be creating a zombie game from scratch using nothing but the built-in Java libraries. So what you're seeing on the screen here is going to be the first half of this tutorial series. This is what we're going to be creating. So this includes object-oriented programming. We're going to set up a system for that. Player movement and collision. Uh, a simple temporary shooting system. Level creation and level loading. Uh, we're going to be loading in sprite sheets. We're going to be creating an, a complete auto tile system. So it makes it super easy for you to just hop in and create different levels. Uh, we're going to be creating a full zombie uh, pathfinding AI. And we're also going to create a game camera so we can uh, take the scope of our world and just blow it up to however big we want it. So that's going to be in the first half of this series. The second half of this series, we're going to be looking at juicy effects that we can add into the game so and we're also going to um, uh, create like a better shooting system uh, that's going to be one of the main ones we need to create a bunch of more collisions uh, because the first half of this series the zombies won't have any collision uh, but in the second half so we're, we're going to put a zombie collision on there uh, health systems you know blood splatter effects when you hit them uh, we can add in a whole heads up display showing like the amount of zombies in the game. We can start creating spawning systems so that, so based on what round you're on, the zombies will come in quicker and they can start running after you instead of walking uh, the whole nine yards. So pretty much anything we want, our imagination is up for grabs. So let's go ahead and get right into it. This is gonna be the most crucial part of our development for this game because we're setting up the back end. Okay, so that's what this these first couple episodes are gonna do. So I've gone through this before on my channel, but I also have created a full ebook on CodyMadeSimple.com that goes through step by step exactly what we're doing here, and you can go ahead and find that in the link below. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so here I am in Java. I'm using Java uh, Eclipse IDE. I think it's Eclipse Juno. If you want to look that up, that's what I'm using. But anything will work. NetBeans. Uh, NetBeans is probably the biggest one uh, off of Eclipse. I'm sure there's a ton more out there. So wherever you prefer, you can use that editor, but I'm gonna be using Eclipse throughout this series. All right, so here we have our simple workspace. Now, let me tell you that if you're completely new to Java and you don't really know how to program at all, I would highly recommend either um, grabbing the ebook from CodyMadeSimple.com uh, or looking up other tutorials on YouTube on how to actually use Java. So this is not a beginner series. This is going to be, uh, I, I assume that you know somewhat of what you're doing, but at the same time, I'm gonna make it as easy as possible for you. So if you're just on that beginner level, how you, you know how to program in Java, but you've never done something like this before, then you should be able to uh, work with, you should be able to work with, uh, with this series just fine. All right, so here is the workspace. I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff. And I'm going to create a new project, Java project. And I'm just going to name it, if I can type, Zombie Game Series. Um, yeah, sure. All right, they gave that back again. All right. So here we are, we have our project. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new class just to begin with. <clears throat> and this is gonna be called the game class. And the game class is, let's see if I can bring the font up a little bit actually. So the game class is our main class. This is where every, every other class that we create, whether that be the zombie class, whether that be the player class, anything, it's all going to run through this main class. This class here, its duty is to render and to update everything in our game. So this is gonna be a pretty crucial class. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend Canvas and I'm gonna implement Runnable. This is so that we can start using threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and hover over that and add the unimplemented method, which is the run method. So this run method gets called every time we start a thread. So this is where our game loop is going to be. A game loop is the heart of any game. It's how it updates so often. It's how it uh, checks what the FPS is. It checks how, how much we're rendering to the screen. Uh, the game loop just controls all that in a timely manner. So technically in our run method, we could just say create a while loop and say while true. 
and then everything inside of here would just run constantly until the game ended right the problem with that is that it's just a while loop so depending on the uh the hardware of the person that's actually playing the game it can be super fast it can be super slow it's not regulated at all so we're going to put something in there um, once we get to that stage so the first thing we need in our game is an actual window we need to hit play and we need to have something happen and it can't find a main method right so let's go ahead and create a new class and i'm going to name this window and this right here is just going to be uh creating the window so that's all this class does so I'm going to create a constructor, public window, and inside here, I'm going to add a few parameters, our width, our height, our title of our game, and uh, we're going to add in the instance of our game class. The reason we're going to do this is because, again, everything goes through this, so we need to paint this canvas. We extended canvas here. We need to actually implement that into our window so our, our game knows where to draw. So I'm gonna create a new JFrame, and I'm just gonna pop in here title, Control Shift O to import any libraries that uh, that aren't in there. At least for Eclipse, I don't know if it's the same on NetBeans. And so now we've created a new instance of our JFrame, and it's titled Frame. So now we can say Frame dot, and now we have all these different actions for our JFrame that we can uh, use. So we're gonna be using this to create the window. So I'm gonna say frame.set preferred size. It's gonna uh, go equal to a new dimension with height. And control shift O to import dimension. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing, frame.set maximum size, not bounds, size. That's a new dimension, width and height. Max if mom, there we are. Frame that set minimum size, new dimension, width and height. And so now we've just set up the borders for our frame. All right, so now we can do a couple more things. We could set uh, frame that set default close operation to jframe dot exit on close. This basically just tells it when we hit the X button that we want to close out of the operation. We don't want it to keep running in the background. All right, and we want to set um, resizable to false because we don't want to be able to resize the window. But later on, if you guys want, we can um, convert it from windowed and full screen as well. All right, and then we can set visible to equal true. And I'm gonna set frame.set location relative to null and basically what that does is it just when we run the game the window will pop up right in the center of our screen so if we don't do that it's going to pop up in the top left so i mean this is technically not needed but it's a lot nicer to have it just pop up for you when you want it to and then we're going to do one more thing we're going to say frame.add and we're going to add the component of our game so this is why we put this in the parameters up here is because we need to add our game canvas to our actual frame itself All right, so now what we can do is go into our game class and let's create the main method in Java. So public static void main string ARGS. And here we're just gonna call a new instance of our game. So what that does is it calls the constructor, which is this guy here. And now what we can do is create a new window. So we can say new window and we can put in our width, height, and title. So I'm gonna put it up here, and I'm gonna create a public static int width, and it's gonna equal 800, and I want the height to equal 608, and then we can create a public string called title, and we can name it zombie game. And so now in our new window in the parameters, we can put in width, height, title, and this. So what we've done here is we've called a new window, which again, the constructor, anytime you call a new instance of something, so a new class or something like that, it's automatically gonna call this constructor, right? And so we have the width, height, string, uh, the title, and our game. So we put that in the parameters. So width, height, title, and then this, because remember we put our game instance in here, so we want this instance. So if we run the game, as you can see, we have a window. 
So that is step one of creating a zombie game. Create a window. Now what we're gonna wanna do is start up a thread. So private thread, thread. All right, and we're gonna create two more methods. And this is gonna be private, synchronized, void start, and private, synchronized, void stop. All right, we're also gonna create another Boolean, or a Boolean, private Boolean called is running, and it's gonna equal false. So basically what this Boolean does is it tells us is the game running, is the game not running. So in our start method, we can say if um, is running, we're gonna to wanna to return. So basically if running equals true, why would we wanna start the, the game process? Why would we wanna restart the thread? We don't wanna do that. So this is just a safety, um, just a, uh, you don't really need this line, uh, but just in case this method ever gets called again, we don't want it starting up a new thread again and again. That would be bad, all right? So we can go down here and we can say, if not is running, return. So basically what these methods do is they're in control of starting and stopping our game. So in here, we're gonna say thread equals new thread. All right, and it's gonna be this. Actually, we can name it, so like game, and then we'll say this. I believe that's how it is, right? Uh, actually, it might just be that. That's what it is. And then we'll just say thread.start. I thought you could name the thread in here. Uh, I must be wrong. And then I'm gonna set is running to equal true. All right, so basically when we start this thread, it's now calling our run method, okay? So now in our stop, we're gonna say um, thread.join. And this requires a try and catch because it could fail joining the threads. And we'll set is running to equal false. All right, I'm gonna add a game loop that's already pre-written. It'll be in the description. So you can copy and paste this into your run method. And this is basically just all of the code for our game loop. Uh, I explain it more in the ebook on Coding Made Simple, but uh, basically what this does is it renders our frames separately then it ticks them. So the tick method is pretty much the update method in our game. So anytime we wanna update something, uh, it'll constantly update it at uh, 60 frames per second. And then the rendering, it'll render uh, as much as it can. Okay, so let's go ahead and create these methods. So private void tick and private void render. Perfect. So again, I'm just gonna comment here, updates the game and here renders the game. So anything we, we see on the screen is ran through this render method anything as far as the movement or shooting system or anything that you see updating coordinates uh, is going to be ran in the tick method. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can render stuff. So what we're going to do is create a buffer strategy. It's going to call BS equals um, this dot get buffer strategy. Control shift O. And now what happens is when we create this, uh, it's gonna equal null because we don't know what we're doing with it yet, right? So we can, we're gonna say if BS equals equals null, then we can say this dot create buffer strategy and we're gonna put three in there. All right. And then we're gonna just return out of this. So in other words, this is only gonna get called once because our BS when we originally create it it's only gonna equal null one time, then we can create the buffer strategy, and now this code no longer gets um, gets used, but we do need it in the beginning. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called graphics, g equals bs dot get draw graphics, control shift o to import graphics, and the graphics is basically what we're gonna use to draw everything onto the screen. So we need this graphic. So when we now what we can say is we can say g dot and we can do all sorts of stuff draw image draw line you can see all this stuff here that uh, that it gives us right so here is going to be the meat and bones of our rendering and then below we're going to say 
bs.show and g.dispose. So let's run the game. And as you can see, nothing has actually changed. But what we can do now is in the meat and bones of our rendering, we can say g.setColor. We'll say color dot, uh, uh, white, or let's do black. And then we can say g.fillRect00 zero, zero, width and our height. So now if we play the game, uh, we don't get anything just yet. And that's because we never called the start method. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to call the start method in our game class here. And we run it. And now we have a black screen. So this is actually rendering graphics onto our screen now. So we can change this to, let's say, green. And now we have a green screen. So now we have the basics of a screen. We have a game loop that's, that's rendering and ticking. And so now the next thing we need to do is start setting up a system for object-oriented programming. So basically what we can do is create a main class. Uh, we can create a main class, which is like our game object, right? So every object in our game is going to be a child of our game object. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna put it into a list and then uh, like it's like an array list. And uh, from there, what we can do is track each individual game object in its own list with its own functionality. So this is how you can get as many zombies as you want in the game, as many objects, as many blocks, as many bullets, as many anything that you'd like. So we're gonna do that next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Uh, if it helped you out, let me know in the comments section. If you need me to improve anything, uh, just let me know. And I'll see you guys next episode. Peace.